Hi, I'm Krista West of Avalia Folk Embroidery, and in this video, I'm going to show you some beginning embroidery stitches. The design that I'm going to work on in this video is our Arcadian Rose Embroidery Kit. I intentionally chose five of the most common embroidery stitches that every beginner should learn and that are really easy to learn and that, as you'll see, are usually just variations of each other. So we're going to start out with back stitch. Actually, here I'll name the stitches that are in the kit. The first one here, this is satin stitch. This is a running stitch here. This is French knot. This is a running stitch here, which turns into a little satin stitch here and here so that it creates this really beautiful rose leaf design. Goes back into a running stitch, loops around, and comes back in in satin stitches. The vine is all satin stitch, just satin stitch worked around in its little curly cues. The leaves are Romanian couching, which is a form of satin stitch designed to travel big spaces quickly and fat, uh, quickly and easily. The little accent dots are satin stitch, and then the outer border is the inside is just plain running stitch here, or back stitch, which is a form of running stitch. So I use those terms inter interchangeably, which I probably shouldn't, but. And then the outer border is Pekingese, which I'm gonna show you right now. It's a form of wrapped back stitch. So to show you first a back stitch, a classic back stitch, I'm gonna start like this. Now, one thing that some that I've actually had comments on from people that they don't they didn't know about embroidery is you need to get your embroidery in your hoop and you move your hoop all around to get at the best position for the stitches. You don't just hold it like this and try and work every stitch like this. You've got to move the hoop and move it kind of bring it closer to you or farther away. So to do this, I'm coming up about an eighth of an inch or maybe a fat eighth of an inch away from where my previous stitch was. I'm pulling up and just to be clear I have two strands of DMC six strand embroidery floss in my needle and I'm using a sharp needle an embroidery they call it a sharp or an embroidery needle and I'm coming up and I'm going like that and I'm just coming up about an eighth of an inch away you can see here and then I'm just going into the hole the previous stitch made okay it looks it's real easy and really rhythmic. I actually like using backstitch a lot for outlining and things because it's very, it's a very nice little meditative stitch. Now it looks kind of messy on the back. Um, even, even mine like looks messy on the back. So you'll see like it looks kind of messy on the back because it's a lot of floss. Now to move on to Pekingese, you come up first off of what you're going to do is we're going to finish that last backstitch. Pekingese is a wrapped backstitch. It's really underutilized. I, I don't see it very much in other um, embroidery design and it's just an awesome stitch because it creates this really cool corded effect. So let me show you how you do that. You come up in the same hole of the previous back stitch, okay? And you can, if you choose to do this, you can also just work all your back stitches around your entire circle and then come back and do the Pekingese. But I'm just gonna show you this way, transitioning straight from a back stitch. Now, what I'm going to do is I am now going to wrap the stitches. I am not gonna put the needle through the fabric, okay? So let me show you how this works. You're gonna come, okay, this is the first little stitch, here's the second. You're gonna go in the second one, underneath the second one like that. You're gonna come up. Do not pull all your floss through. Leave a little circle there, okay, like that, okay? Now you're going to go down into that first stitch like this. Again, not picking up any cloth. And you are going to be under this stitch, but over the previous stitch. So you can see that my floss is under my needle. Okay? Now you're gonna just pull snugly, gently and snugly, and it's gonna create this really cool corded stitch right there, that little corded bit. Now you go up into the second stitch away. Again, under the stitch, not through the fabric. You're coming straight through like that, and you're gonna go you're again leaving the loop, holding the little loop of floss down with your thumb, and you're going to go over that and you're gonna pull it snug. I'm gonna do a few more so you can see what that looks like. There we go. Holding the loop down and going through. You can see this gets a really nice little rhythm to it. It's an awesome stitch. 
just because it creates such a pretty corded effect and it takes a really simple row of running stitches and makes them look awesome. It also can be used as a fill stitch. In ancient Chinese embroidery, it was often used as a fill stitch. Oops, sorry there, let me get that near the camera. Okay, so now we've done that and we've worked those, okay? So I'm gonna, and then when you wanna end off, you can just stick your needle right there and go into the previous stitch like that, and then you go to the back, and then you just loop through. In fact, I'll show you that. I just usually loop through a few stitches, like this, maybe like three of them, and then I go ahead and cut off the thread, like this. I'm gonna set that down so you can see that, and I'm gonna just snip my thread. Okay, the next stitch I'm gonna show you is the French knot, okay? So the French knot, I'm gonna come down here and I'll show you that one. You have your needle ready to go. You bring it up like this. Now this one I'm gonna turn the hoop. In fact, on this one, I'm gonna shift this a bit because you're gonna see in a minute here, I need, I need my hand a little closer. So I'm quickly shifting the design up a little higher in my hoop, tightening it a bit. Now I'm gonna come up like that. I'm gonna pull that floss through and I am going to, and this is, here we go, let me show you. It's a little hard to do when you're not sitting. I am going to hold the floss like this. I'm going to wrap it, wrap my needle with it like that and stick it back down. I usually go just like a thread away. Some people go in the exact same stitch that they were in. I don't do that. I go a thread away because it just keeps the knot from popping back through to the other side. And when you very gently pull that, you now have a nice little knot. So let me show that to you one more time. You come up like this. You make a loop. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get not get my hands in the way. You make a loop like this around your needle. And then you very, oops, and I lost it. So let's do it again. Make the loop, pull it taut, and then very gently put it back through the fabric. And as your floss travels through that little loop you made, it's going to create a little knot, okay? These are awesome for fill stitches. So you could even take and fill those in in here. I thought it might be too many French knots, so that's why I didn't do it on the design, but you can certainly do that. Now, the next stitch I'm gonna show you how to do is the Romanian couching. This is a really fabulous stitch. And again, I'm gonna move my embroidery and get it situated in my hoop where it's easiest for me to work the stitch. And right here, when I work Romanian couching, I like to have it kind of set high in my hoop. I'm gonna be working this leaf right here. So I want it kind of high in my hoop, okay? And I like to kind of roll my fabric up like this and kind of just get it tucked in there so it doesn't really get in my way. Just kind of roll it around. Okay, now I'm getting ready to work this leaf. So I have got my needle threaded, two strands of embroidery floss, and here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come up over here I'm looking for the place in the design that has the first straight across line. You'll see in a minute here why I'm doing that. So I'm gonna come straight across like that. I'm going to go in here, but I am now gonna come up part way across the stitch and again, over the thread, okay? Now I'm gonna pull that through like this. Oh, if it doesn't hang up on my fabric, there I am. Pull that all the way through. And then I'm going to take another stitch basically over that bar of, this is this long float that I've done. It's too long. If you left it like this, it'd just be too long and it would, it would gape and it wouldn't lie flat. So to make it lie flat, now I'm gonna use this anchor stitch. I'm gonna put another stitch in the middle and use it as an anchor stitch. I'm gonna come up here to the outer edge and I'm now gonna pull that through like that and watch what happens you get that really great little anchor stitch there. I'm gonna go back and do this again. I'm gonna to come to the other side and I'm gonna make a little anchor stitch like that. I'm gonna come in this way. I am going to then pull till I get that embroidery like set like that. I am now gonna take and anchor that stitch. Now you'll notice as I'm doing this, some kind of fine technique here, you can move this bar kind of up or down. You could space these out like this and have a little bit of the fabric show in between. That's a cool technique. For this design, I'm putting them all really close together and I'm gonna do another one. Now, if one of your leaves has, um, 
if it has like a little section up here that you feel like needs to be rounded out, just go in and take one or two little satin stitches there to give that leaf a little bit more shape. Sometimes you can just do them straight across. I'm going to go in and do this again and show you again one more time. So I'm coming up right under that other anchor stitch, coming up like that. Okay, I'll get real close on this one so you can see. And I'm going in, and I'm going like this, okay? And I'm coming over that stitch and it anchors that stitch and creates a really cool effect because it gives the effect of the, the spine down a leaf. Now, you can use this effect to great success. You can make your anchor stitch very wide. So you can start over here and like go way over here and make a really wide anchor stitch like, like this. Let me show you that where it really lays way over. Okay. Like that one, but you can also make them teeny, teeny, tiny. You can make this teeny, tiny little anchor stitch like this. And I'm going to take one little tiny anchor stitch and then you get a really kind of raised effect on the embroidery. So like that, you can see that like that. Okay. Does that make sense? Awesome. So you just keep working it. The great thing about Romanian couching too is as you can see, you cover a lot of ground very quickly. So that is how to do back stitch, which is a form of running stitch, Pekingese stitch, Romanian couching, French knots. The satin stitch here is basically just a whole bunch of running stitches set sideways. So I hope that helped. Uh, thank you so much for purchasing an Avlia Folk Embroidery Kit. Happy stitching!